Uh, good evening, guys. Can you hear me? Evening, James. Yes, I can hear you. Okay, let's just give it a minute for others to join and then we can start. Okay, I hope you are all having a wonderful Monday. I would like to welcome you all uh, to our first session uh, for semester two modules. So my name is James, I'm from Varsity and Limited Tutors. I'm sure a number of you will have basically uh, private tutors who assist students with their uh, modules. So what we do is we do something in order to just help you. And so for the discount techniques, I'll be taking you through his name is Akudakwashe Sivanda. He's uh, one of our statisticians at Avacity and Limited Tutors. So he knows very well how to handle his modules. So he'll be taking you information management, which is IT, and also statistical techniques, which is basically business statistics. So for information management, we are going to be doing those classes on Monday, and then for statistical techniques, we are going to be doing those classes on Tuesday. So do the every Monday and every Tuesday is load shedding these days. So if there is any load shedding that has happened, instead of a class, you will receive a video for the space. Then also during the classes, I would urge you to make sure that you make some, if there is anything that you would want to ask the tutor, you can then unmute yourself and ask the tutor so that at the end of the day, whatever is being taught is audible to everyone in the class. Then just like last semester, the amount that you pay for the lessons includes the videos, includes the live classes, includes exam preparation, includes uh, a discussion and a sample of the case study assignment and also includes help with your case issues. So we are basically trying to cover everything that you might need other than doing the exam for you. For that one, we are just going to do exam preparation, right? But for everything else, it's covered within that amount. For the assignments, you're going to do an assembly of the assignment, which you can then take and draft your own answer at the end of the day. And for case issues, we're also going to help you with your work with your case issue at the end of the day. Then the cost, just like the last semester, is 750 rand for each module, which you can pay over three months. So you can pay
then the classes will go for three months up until uh, April. So we're going to do classes for February, for um, uh, March, and for April. But for January, that is this week, and uh, next week, those classes will be free just to help you uh, get into training. But thereafter, only the students that have paid for the classes will be training us to the classes. Uh, Mr. Tsvanda, can you say hi? Um. All right. Uh, thanks. Thank, thank you very much, uh, James. Um, let me just ask, uh, can you hear me perfectly? Can someone just, uh, can someone just confirm if you can hear me? Okay. All right. No, that's fine. Uh, apologies. I think, I don't know if Mr. James is still on. Um, I think uh, there were some some parts that we didn't really get from you. Uh, so, so I think uh, maybe we'll, we'll see maybe, maybe later at the end of the lecture, if you're still available, maybe you can, you can maybe just highlight one or two things. But basically what Mr. James was just trying to say, for those that didn't really hear much, the main uh, things that we was talking about is about the payment 750, which is going to cover uh, this module only. So each and every module, is it's 750 so it's covering for three months from february up um um up up to march right so it's covering uh three 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 months right so it will be 250 per month then uh uh also it's going to cover your assignment it's going to cover the the lectures itself the assignment and the kcq Right. So basically, that's the more uh, like what uh, uh, James was just trying to to say. But we we'll try to give him maybe at the end of the lecture, just see if it's still available. Maybe he can reiterate some of the some of the stuff that he he was highlighting. Thank you so much, Mr. James, for for just uh, giving me this platform. Like Mr. James said, my name is Kudakwashe. Uh, I'm the one who's going to be taking you for uh, information management and uh um statistical techniques so tomorrow also i'm the one who's going to be taking you for the what for statistical techniques and um today is going to be an introductory lecture uh what i mean by saying introductory lecture is just for you to have an overview how we conduct these lectures right so so uh, my lectures are not complicated, so the mode of uh, the way that I'm going to conduct this lecture, specifically for information management, because information management and statistical techniques they're a bit different. So we we'll have some slides so that you can just have an overview of uh, um, uh, what we'll be talking about. So what everything that we are going to be talking about in this lecture is in your study module. So we're going to cover everything according to how your lecturers and your university have set up the information in the study module. So I'm not going to bring anything outside the study module. The only thing that I'm going to bring outside the study module is maybe the examples, because this is a practical uh, uh, a course, right? So uh, we have to bring in maybe some examples from the real world way so that you can understand the point that I'll, I'll be trying to, to put across at that particular moment. And then feel free to ask questions. You don't have to wait at the end of the lecture for you to ask a question, right? So you can either uh, um, unmute yourself, maybe while least I'm trying to explain something and you don't understand, you can unmute yourself at that particular moment and then ask me a question or you can write on the chat. So while I'm uh, doing this lecture, I'm actually also uh, checking the chat so that to see if there are people that are having some, some questions, right? So um, without wasting much of your time, uh, let me just share the slide that I do have for today. Um, all right.
Okay, so just confirm. Okay, let me do this. Uh, all right. Let me share again. All right, so just confirm if you can if you can see the the what if you can see the 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 the, the slide, right? Yes, I can, sir. All right, thank you, thank you so much. All right, so this is information management. So generally, we want to give an overview. Uh, what is information management, right? uh it's 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 not in it's not something which is which is which is complicated i think maybe if not 99 percent of the people on this platform you already know what what information management is maybe maybe not in the manner of the word itself but uh an idea of what consists or what is being uh covered with the module itself so generally information management according to the definition given within your study module it is the process of collecting right that's the first thing you're collecting you're storing you're managing maintaining information in all its forms so generally it's it's managing information that's why it's called information management. But that management of information now, it's in stages. You first have to collect the information. Then you store the information, you manage it, you maintain it in all its various forms. So what information management does, basically, it covers the procedures and guidelines organizations must adopt. Right, so organizations must adopt uh, uh, certain procedures or guidelines in order for them to manage and communication and communicate information among different individuals, departments, and stakeholders. Remember, within a company, there's information maybe that will come from HR department, that will come from the finance department, that will come maybe from the guys that are maybe at the workshop. So the way that information is communicated or managed now there has to be some guidelines and procedures that an organization must adopt that's what that's what we're trying to say so information management it focuses on the level of control an organization has over the information it produces so an organization once it has information it must be able to have control of that information so it requires building dedicated man information management systems right that's that's a key word there that's why it's it's highlighted so what we're trying to say is for the organization to have control of the information right they they are now helped by what we call information system right so that information system now it helps the company to use its resources to support business processes now that's where we we have to ask another question uh, what is information system so we are seeing here that information management cannot be information management without information system because those information systems those systems are there to help the organization to control the information right so now what is information system so information system is a combination of one hardware two software three uh, communication networks that people build and use for collecting remember what we are saying information management is the collection the storing the management and the maintaining of information so now in, in they use information system to do that so information system now it's a combination of hardware a software and telecommunication networks that now the company uses to collect the information to store the information because remember when they are collecting information they must have a gadget to do that when they are to store information they must have a system or a gadget to do that to process that information it needs also a system so that's where the information system comes in to help now that management of information to be possible so now let's now uh, maybe uh, uh, have a, a, a brief, we're going to talk about it later on, right? Remember, this is an introductory. So now for those that don't know what hardware means, right? that is an example of what, um, okay, uh, example of, of hardware, 
components of a computer. So we're not talking about information system. Generally, we're talking about IT technology, right? That's what we're talking about. We're talking about um, is that a question? Let me see. All right. So, so generally, we're talking about IT technology. So in IT, we've got what we call hardware. In IT, we've got what we call software. We've got what we call uh, telecommunication networks. Right. So this is an example of hardware component, your mouse, your keyboard, your monitor, CPU, motherboard, RAM, right? And then, um, all right, so now this is an example of, of software. So when we're talking about software, we talk about Zoom, right? We talk about Microsoft. Mr. Sibanda? Yes. Um, I just want to ask something with regards to the components you're discussing right now. Yes. Does operating systems form part of this hardware that we would be adding or the component that would sit on top of that hardware? Uh, okay, if, I, if I'm getting your, your, your question correctly, um, hardware, it's main, mainly we use them for either inputting, inputting information, right? Maybe like, for example, a keyboard. You're inputting maybe you're typing or a mouse, right? Or you can use it for processing because it's divided into three, input, process, and output. Process, that's where the CPU comes in, where it does some background, um, some background. Okay. Uh, where there are some uh, background stuff that are done by the computer, maybe calculations that you don't see. And then the monitor now, that's the one that projects the output. So now the OS, you talked about OS, OS is not part of yes. the hardware. Operating system, oh. that's the part of software. This is the, if you see the screen, oh. the, 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 I zoomed in a part of the slide, that is the operating system. So operating system does not fall under the, the, the hardware component of information, okay. but it falls under what we call software. Okay, thank you. All right, okay, no, that's fine. And thank you so much for asking. Yeah, yeah, like I told you, just feel free. If you have any question, it's better for me to address the question now rather than at the end of the lecture because maybe you might forget. So feel free just to unmute yourself or even to chat, to, 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 to write on the chat box so that I can address that question. So I'm saying, thank you so much. So we're saying operating system now, that's part of a software. Let me see, yeah, like here, yeah, you can see this, this Apple, right? So this is iOS, right? Let me see if there's another uh, icon of, of an operating system here. Yeah? I think that's the only one, right? So the rest here, yeah, like uh, Google Maps, Google the Play Store, uh, Chrome, uh, Edge, Firefox, you see, PayPal, Android, yeah, Android is another OS, right? So these are the software, right? You can't see it with your physical eyes, but they are linked somehow to the, uh, 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 to the CPU, right? Those are uh, what the computer also uses to do uh, some, um, some processes in the background, right? And then the third component now is what we call telecommunication. That's where the internet comes in, right? The, 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 the communication, like it's more like the connection between computers, right? So that you'll be able to, you'll be able to um, you'll be able to connect to the internet, or maybe if you're at a company, you'll be able to com communicate with computers within that company. Uh, we're going to talk about it later, types of, 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 of networks like internet, intranet, and so forth, right? So, so generally network or yeah, network it falls what, under what we call telecommunications, right? Where you are now, connecting computers together. If you didn't know what we call the internet, the true definition of an internet is the communicate, is, it is, it is the, the connection of computers. You remember, let me give a, a practical example of what I'm trying to say. Was it last year or last year, but one, there was a certain time where you would go on Google and you couldn't, you couldn't go on Google, you couldn't go on Google, you couldn't go on YouTube, you couldn't go to any uh, website that is affiliated with with Google, be it Gmail, uh, Google itself, 
uh, uh, YouTube, right? The reason why you couldn't do that is because their servers were down, right? So their servers are actually computers. So when you are writing www.google.com, it is it's more like a, 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 a what do you call it a nickname of a computer in Google uh, uh, Google department, right? So like I said, internet it is just the communication of what it is just the communication of of computers. Now, uh, business firms and other organizations they rely on information systems to carry out and manage their operations. So we come to realize that organizations themselves, for them to function in terms of their operations, they rely on information management. To interact between customers, they rely on information management. To even talk with suppliers or to compete in the marketplace, they rely on, on what? On information system. Like for example, a company might use what is called transaction processing system. So if you come to... Uh, um, let me just take you off a little bit of, of, of this course. Some of you that are doing business management courses, you will come to realize that there are three levels of or, or three hierarchy levels of management. There's lower management, there's middle management, there's upper management. So we come to realize that the lower management, they've got their own information system. Middle management, they've got their own um, management uh, info, uh, uh, information system, right? And the upper, they also have their own. We're going to cover that in this, in this lecture. So transaction processing system is an example of an information system that is used by lower management. Right, where they, they 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 just lock in some uh, stuff that they will be doing day to day, and then when now when it comes to talking to customers to relate to customers, there's what we call a CRM, which is a a customer relationship management system. So what it does now, it helps the company to interact, right, for calls, you know, recording self-care and you know it it is just there to service the customer right so instead of people you know taking up calls each and every time they've got a crm that is there to help the company to relate with with what with uh with the customers then now when it comes to supply chain when it comes to logistics remember maybe for example like companies like shoprite Right, they need to order stuff from uh, maybe from suppliers, and then they have got to transport that uh, whatever they've uh, bought from suppliers to the various what various uh, shop right uh, 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 places. Right, so they need a system, right, where all the suppliers can be in one place, where they can communicate with suppliers in one place and see what is happening. That's where now the supply chain management system comes into play. So it will be responsible for logistics, time to market, planning, distribution, procurement, logistics, and so forth, right? So that is another type of information system that is used by what? By a company, right? And now when it comes to maybe operations, Right, in operations, you just want to see what is happening. Maybe uh, in each and every department in a company, there's an information system that is designed for that. It is called ERP. So you can check from the finance department, you can check from production, you can check from human resource, you can check from those that do plan, from those that are doing uh, logistics and supply chain, inventory management, reporting, even CRM. You can even you can even also check using ERP and sales and marketing. So it's more like it's a hybrid ERP. It's a hybrid information system, right? Where it allows you to see what is happening in each and every department, but from your computer, right? So information systems they are there to help companies in operation, operations, customer management, supplier management, and even to be competitive in in the market. So now let's look at one, one unit, right? Now I've given you an, a, an overview of what information management is. Information management is all about managing in the information, right? From collecting it, storing it, managing it, and maintaining it, but you're not using uh, uh, a human effort there. Humans are there 
to control using information system. So information system is there now to make life easy for the management of that information. So now let's look at one unit so that you can have an idea, right, of what to expect in this module. Unit eight, where we're talking about technologies and tools for protecting information resources. So remember, we are living in a time where there are hackers, you know, there are viruses, whatever. So we need to understand the technologies and tools that an organization can use, right? In what? In protecting the information resources or in protecting the information systems that they have. So now I'm taking like for an example, a question. So this is actually a question that was, uh, that was asked uh, um, uh, in one of, one of, um, okay, uh, just give me a moment here. One of, uh, um, one of, all right, I just want to share, I think my screen, all right. My screen just went off here. So it was uh, one of the, the assignments, right? So uh, they were asking information knowledge management systems are vulnerable to technical organization, organizational and environmental threats from internal and external sources. The weakest link in the chain is poor system management. Then the question is provide a detailed report highlighting technologies and tools to management for protecting a firm information resources. So you can see that this question is asking you about unit eight. So the good part about this course is your lecturers, they're going to ask you stuff that is within the study guide. So you really need to understand uh, uh, your study guide. So we're going to cover each and every unit in this, in this course and give examples of the, that are pertaining to that, to that, to that unit. So now let's first define what is system vulnerability, right? Why, why would we need to protect information systems, right? So information systems, they are vulnerable to one, technical, two, organizational, or what we call environmental threats. So these environmental threats, they can be internal within the organization or external coming from someone, maybe a hacker, right? So now what are the tools now? that we use, that we can use to protect the organization, to protect the information resources, right? So the first thing, right, we can use what we call access control. The second, we can use what we call firewalls. The third is what we call encryption and public key infrastructure. Then we can use intrusion detection systems. Then we can use antivirus software or we can use, uh, uh, so that was the last one, right? So access control, when I'm talking about access control, we're talking about a method of restricting access to sensitive data. That's the reason why you see maybe some companies, they've got votes. If you go to a bank, right? They've got a vote. They've got a certain maybe a, a, a room that has got a vote. Why? It's, an, it's a physical access control measure to restrict access to sensitive things, right? So there are three types of, uh, uh, there are two types of access control. So it can be physical or it can be, it can be logical, right? So physical, it means that uh, it, maybe it can be a, an access key or a logical, it can be username and, and password, right? So now these are types of physical access control, talking about the vote, keys, a keypad, card, or even a guard himself. Guard can be, can be an example of of what? Of physical access control, logical access control, we're talking about username, password. That's why some of you guys on your phones, on your laptops, you've got logical access control. You don't want anyone who holds your phone just to have access to your information because you might have stuff that may be, maybe what? Maybe uh, um, uh, uh, sensitive there. Then there are what we call tokens and smart card. A token is a, is a peripheral device used to gain access to an electronically restricted resource. So this now, when you're talking about tokens, uh, I think you've seen what we call multi-factor authentication method, where now on top of username and password, you require a code. 
right? So there's what we call Google Authenticator. There's what we call Microsoft Authenticator. They give like uh, tokens, they generate token, tokens after every 10 seconds, uh, unique tokens. So on top of your username and password, you need to have a what? A, a passcode. So, so types of those passcodes, they, you can generate them using maybe Microsoft uh, Microsoft Authenticator, or you can buy like a, a, some physical devices there, right? Then there's what we call smart cards, like your credit card. You can see that there's a chip there, or maybe in Finland, the idea has got a chip there, right? I'm not, uh, so, so, so that is uh, another way to ensure uh, access control. Then another way um, of ensuring access control is what? Using biometrics. So when we're talking about biometrics, we're talking about fingerprint scanning. We're talking about uh, vascular biometric, right? Uh, where they can maybe uh, they can uh, uh, detect uh, like uh, maybe heat or something from your body. Then there's iris scanning. So this is not only stuff from movies, right? Where you can see a person is going to a vote and then they scan the, the iris because your iris is unique. It's more like your fingerprint, right? Then there's what we call voice authentication, right? Uh, nowadays, you know, uh, phones, they are now, uh, 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 what do you call it? They are now uh, um, intelligent. They can recognize your voice, Siri, Google Assistant, right? Then biometrics in your phone. So this stuff is not far away from you, right? Your phone allows you to have fingerprint uh, uh, scanning, right? You can uh, unlock your phone using a fingerprint, you can unlock your phone using your face, or there are some phones that are advanced that you can unlock them using your voice. So that is uh, um, um, an example of what, of access control. Then there are firewalls, firewalls now, they they are there they establish a barrier between a network and untrusted network like for example you can you can uh, protect it's a barrier right you're protecting your the, uh, the, the, the the network within a company from the external network so that hackers they don't come in don't worry we are going to to cover this much in detail this is just an introduction right so uh, what a firewall does it blocks unwanted traffic and then it allows uh, some some traffic as well. I think some of you guys maybe that work a certain organization. You see, when you get to work, you can't access Facebook for some reason. You can't access Facebook, but when you go out or when you use your phone, you can still access Facebook. But once you are using the internet from the from the company, you can't access Facebook. They are using a firewall, right? They don't want people to be on Facebook. Oh, while well, they are working, that's the logic. So they are using what they call a firewall, right? And then there's what we call a software firewall. I think some of you guys you have seen this pop up once in a maybe once in a while on your laptops, right? It is a software firewall that protects your what your 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 laptop. Then there's what we call a hardware firewall, right? Cisco devices, Cisco. Uh, uh, these are the, mostly these are used by by companies to. Uh, let me see who's someone who hasn't. Uh, who's, let me try to um, unmute the person. Unmute the person. Sorry. All right. Okay. So so there's now intrusion detection systems, right? Intrusion detection systems. They are the same as firewalls, right? They are just used to monitor traffic right, that moves through the network. So it's just uh, trying to search if there's suspicious activity that is happening, uh, maybe, maybe a hacker that is just trying to, to, what, to, to access the, the, the network of the company. So normally this is the network of the company. They've got an intrusion detection system. Then there's a firewall, there's a router, and then there's a, an internet. That is basically how they, what, they set up the what the 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 the, um, the setup for for protecting the what the the internet all right so now um there's now antivirus and anti spyware software right types of antiviruses i think you guys you you know what we're talking about in you know, avg avast bit defender not one right each and every computer, I think your computer also uses an antivirus to protect it, right? So, so guys, uh, I think my time is 
I'm left with a, a minute now. I'm almost done because I'm, I'm on slide 39. So generally, this is the, the introduction, right, of, of this subject. We're going maybe to pick to, to some of these things. We're going just to, to, to repeat them, right? I was just wanted to show you an overview of how we are going to uh, um, to be doing this 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 lecture, right? So generally, um, information management is all about talking about information systems, and these information systems, like I said, there are various various types of them. You know, they are uh, each almost each and every department in a company they have an, an information management system. Okay, let me, I think let me do this. Let me just uh, regenerate another 